God bless you, my beloved. Thank you for joining us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the senior pastor of the church. Before we get started, let me encourage you to please like us and subscribe to our channel so you may keep up with our worldwide ministry. God bless you and thank you. My beloved, this will be part four and the closing of our message series titled, Death is Certain. Our main scripture is from Ecclesiastes chapter nine and verse six, which reads as follows, and their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. As I said previously, my beloved, no matter how much wisdom you have, wealth, property, gains, they will all die with you. You will leave everything behind, never to have again. This is the way life is. Every man is destined to die. Then the judgment. Now, if you are a Christian and before you die, the rapture takes place, you will be changed and you will go to be with the Lord forever. And you can read that in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 52. And 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. My beloved, only Jesus Christ can rescue us as Christians from physical death. But if the rapture or the catching away or the hard bustle doesn't take place, we will go by way of the grave. In this modern time, because of the economy, a lot of people are choosing to be cremated. But no matter what, you will die and never return to this life that you lived here on earth. And when you leave here, your soul will either go to torment or paradise. And then, after the great white throne judgment, your soul will go to either heaven or the lake of fire. Let's hope that you choose Jesus Christ and go to heaven. So our main scripture for today is the one that I just read, Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 6. But I will read it again. Their love and their hate and their envy have already perished, and forever they have no more share in all that is done under the sun. So my beloved, all the feelings which are exhibited and developed in the life of this world are annihilated. Three are selected as the most potent passions, love, hate, and envy, such as by their strength and activity might ideally be supposed to survive even the stroke of death, but all are now at an end. All your feelings, everything, are left behind. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun, which means in this life. Between the dead and the living, an impassable gulf exists. Now you can read that in the account of the rich man and Lazarus. The view of death here given intently, gloomy and hopeless, as it appears to be, is in conformity with other passages of the Old Testament. And you can read that in Psalm chapter 6 and verse 5 and Psalm 30 verse 9. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 10 says, Now Christ Jesus has come to show us the kindness of God. 
Christ our Savior defeated death and brought us the good news, the gospel. It shines like a light and offers life that never ends. It offers salvation through Jesus Christ. It was Christ who brightened the dark valley of death, showing the blessedness of those who die in the Lord, bringing life and immortality to light through the gospel of love and peace. Not that the separate spirits of the dead are without their affections, or these unexercised, the spirits of just men made perfect will love God and Christ, the angels and good men, and all that is good more intently. Love will continue after this life, my beloved, and be in its height, and therefore said to be the greatest grace. They will hate sin, Satan, and the enemies of Christ, and be filled with zeal for his glory. My beloved, when you die to self and live to Christ, you're not the same. You don't follow the flesh. You don't exhibit the things of the flesh, but you exhibit love and the things of Jesus Christ. The spirits of the wicked dead will still continue to love sin, and hate the Lord Jesus Christ. Hate God. Hate everything that is good. They will envy happiness. The happiness of every Christian. And will rise again with the same spirit of malice against them. In the judgment, they will still hate God. They won't want to stand before him. But they must. When God summons them, they must come. When they die, <coughs> excuse me, when they die, they still hate. They will hate in hell. They will hate in the lake of fire. They didn't love anything good in this life. They just loved evil. And they demonstrated evil. Therefore, they will have that evil with them for all eternity. They will exist in the lake of fire with others that love evil. There will be nothing good in hell. Nothing whatsoever. It is all evil. It is all bad. It is envy. Hatred. There is no love. None whatsoever. So if you don't love in this life, if you envy, you hate, you hate God, you hate everything that is good, you will hate it for all eternity in hell, where you will be burning and suffering for all eternity. It says, neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is under the sun. When you die, you're dead. You can't enjoy the pleasures of this life. You can't enjoy food. You can't enjoy drink. You can't enjoy sunshine. You can't enjoy the stars at night. You can't enjoy your family. You can't enjoy your spouse. You can't enjoy your job, your friends. You can't enjoy sports. You can't enjoy anything. Because you will be in the lake of fire where there is no good, no enjoyment. Everything you ever owned is left behind for someone else to use. For someone else to squander. Everything you work for. Everything you are burning in hell for. Is left for somebody else. And if they don't change their life. They will follow you. Into the lake of fire. Your houses will be gone. You will not return. To your home. To your land. To your country. All is gone for eternity. But my beloved, the good person, the Christian, the good man, the good woman, the good child, has a good portion in heaven 
which is above the sun, not under the sun. Sun is S-U-N. Because God is the portion of every born-again believer in Jesus Christ. Every saint, every Christian, as you may say. Heaven is the inheritance of every born-again believer in Jesus Christ forever and ever, which is for eternity. So my beloved, in its finality, the wicked have no good part with the righteous in the world to come. And they have no profit of all that is done in this world under the sun. When you're dead, you're dead. Your body dies, decays, rots, turns back to dust from whence it came. Might be God. I want to give you the opportunity to get your life right here and now so you can go to heaven and be in bliss and happiness and joy and peace for eternity. Because knowing that death is certain, what type of life are you going to live here in this world? Unrighteous living will lead a person to hell, but righteous living in Christ will lead to eternal happiness in heaven. The evil, selfish, and hateful person will soon be forgotten in this life, and everything that person leaves behind will go to someone else to squander. But the good person who chooses Christ will leave behind a legacy of good and will be long remembered. Which do you choose today, my beloved? Because you are surely going to die one day, and you will die at God's appointed time. If you are viewing or listening to this message, you still have time to change your life for the better. Don't lose out on this opportunity, my beloved. Please don't lose out. Repent and turn to Jesus Christ for salvation. If you'd like to receive Christ as your Savior and Lord today, please repent of your sins. Ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior and Lord. Won't you do that today? It's not hard. You must believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. You must believe this. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. And only he can save you from the lake of fire. You must believe that he was born, crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. Read or listen to the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed. It says it all. So if you would like to Go to heaven when you leave this life. After you die, which you surely will. Please, repent. Pray this prayer with me and mean it from your heart. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today. Death is certain. And I know that if I die today, or I'm not sure if I die today, where I would spend eternity. But today, I want to make sure, I want to secure my place in heaven with Jesus Christ and everything and everyone that is good. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me of my sins, Father God, in Jesus' name. I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, into this world to die for my sins. That he was crucified, died, buried, rose from the dead on the third day, ascended into heaven, is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father, in a place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe this today. I confess this today. I repent today. And I ask you to save me. And I believe by faith, by my prayer, my sincerity, my repentance, that you have forgiven me. Jesus Christ has become my Savior. I have become a Christian. And when I leave this life, I will go to heaven. 
In Jesus' name I pray and thank you for saving me today. Amen. My beloved, if you truly repented, you prayed that prayer, let me be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I would like you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church. When I preach this from the Bible, from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation in its fullness, omitting nothing. Get an audience with a pastor, ask him to pray with you, to pray for you, to launch you with oil. You may say, repeat the prayer of repentance again. That's fine. You may do it. Ask him to baptize you in water by full immersion in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as an outer witness of an inward conversion. Ask him to teach you, to lead you, and guide you, to put you in a new Christian's class, a believer's class, that you may learn. Ask him to give you a Bible if you have one. Ask him to mentor you in every area of your life. Then what I would like you to do is contact me by email at abundant.grace at att.net. You can also contact me through our websites at www.abundantgracechurch.net or www.abundantgraceofmidlothian.com. Thank you for watching us today. And please follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn. We are on most of the major websites. Thank you, my beloved. I pray that God bless you with salvation through this message series. But please, I need to hear from you. Send me an email and tell me what happened at abundant.grace at att.net. God bless you, my beloved. This concludes our message series, Death is Certain, part one, two, three, and four. From Ecclesiastes chapter nine and verse six. Thank you for being with us today. God bless you and go with God.